like items and win rates. I'm not sure exactly how they got this data, but kind of cool. Uh, this is the round that it's in the bag, the amount of times that it wins, and the amount of times that it loses. And you can sort by class, you can sort by division. So like if you want to see what is working in GM... for Reaper. Okay, there are, like, no games. Maybe not GM. Uh, pretty low on Master Games, too, but it's okay. How about we add Diamond? Okay, we add Diamond, and the number goes up a lot. Uh, we want to see late game builds. Like, how is the Bloodthorn build doing late? Or daggers. You see the classic dagger fall off pretty good early on, and then, oops, Valors start coming online. Uh, how about Bloodthorn? Same idea. You get your nice power spike if you get a Bloodthorn early, and then not really beating stuff as reliably later on as the Exodia start to come together. How about Darksaber? Eh, a little bit better. Curves that a bit more. A little slower to come online, but when you hit early on, pretty good. <laughs> Rapier. What else we got here? And you can just, like, scroll through all the items. My favorite thing from looking at this is if you go and look at Ranger... And you look up Mega Clover. Oh yeah. <laughs> look at that. Look at that beautiful curve. <laughs> From 75-25 to 90-10. Yeah, I don't know where the data is coming from, but they seem to have pretty big uh, sample sizes. I don't know if the game's, like, sending you this when it's sending you boards, or what, but... I haven't looked into it. I think, uh... Bow and arrow. <laughs> this one's great. You go from winning all of your fights on round 7 to getting decimated on round 8. What else was good? Uh... Oh, we could look at, like, Berserker Eggscal versus Pyro Eggscal. You see, this is usually where I get to make my Eggscal. I don't know where all of these people exist, but it must be nice. Imagine finding a heroic potion before round 11. The favorite slash preferred class? Not really. I haven't been a big fan of playing Reaper or Ranger this month, this uh, this week, but it varies from patch to patch. And then if you switch over to Pyro, get what their eggs cow looks like. It's pretty similar. Maybe a little bit worse than the top end. Hmm. Don't go Pyro Double X, I guess. You could also like look at the different subclasses, how they're doing. So if you want to go Big Bull doesn't fall off as hard as Mega Clover. It keeps up a pretty respectable win rate, but probably not the best if you were trying to get to 18 wins. I that was better than I would have thought. It stays positive the whole time, even if it's not super positive. 
like with some items you see crazy swings like uh, we're in all the subclasses like look at double axe here or double axe and chain whip here both performing really well Even Wolf Emblem is like not doing bad when it gets taken. It just doesn't get taken much. <laughs> the villain sword curve. Surprised this steadies off at like round 16. I would have thought that it would keep getting worse. I wonder what's making that get better. About Jerry. It's just called Jerry. Gingerbread Jerry. Does Bloodthorn have a low win rate? Does it? That's about what I expect for Bloodthorn across all classes. If you narrow it down to the classes that are good at Bloodthorning, Still kind of bad there. I think Reapers wasn't that bad. It still sucks at the tail end. I don't know, Bloodthorn also just kind of sucks at the tail end. It's a little better on Pyro. And I would guess Ranger is pulling it down. Eh. Eh, it's about the same. If anything, Pyro is bringing it up, and the rest are all the same. Maybe a little bit more of a fall off at the end. Is there one for Goobs? Yeah. Uh, all the items are here. Like, Steel Goob. <laughs> the drop on round 8 because of all the people going Mega Clover. <laughs> Bloodthorn to be the best in Berserker. Yeah, me too. I've had the most success with Bloodthorn and Berserker. It's okay on Pyro too. It's a nice flex option. Yeah. <laughs> Surprised this is as high as it is. It's not like great, but like on turn twelve, it's doing pretty good. He's a bit solid. This is probably the worst Chili Goob has looked since Early Access release. This kind of matches up with my experience. I have not been that impressed by Chili Goobs recently. Not really sure what changed. It felt fine. I thought it was fine after the first nerf. Maybe it was just the first nerf. Is it a single... Is it better a single Chili Goob or two? It depends what you're doing. I don't have a rule for you. Cauldron. It's only kind of bad. It wins round 8. Loses every other round, but it wins round 8. What about Busted Blade? Pretty solid. Makes sense. Like, the scary part about Busted Blade is before you get the Busted Blade. Like, this isn't showing all the games that you're playing your early game weapon and dying before either making the Busted Blade or getting to upgrade the Busted Blade. It's like the same thing where, like, Darksaber stats are a little bit skewed. Because a lot of the time you're committing to the Darksaber before you have the Darksaber. And the games where you don't find the Darksaber are the ones that you're dead before it's on your board.
Like, I would much rather have a curve, like... What is it? It's like a non... A non-legendary thing that you'd get early. Okay, definitely don't want a curve like this. That is... Yuck. I would much rather have a curve that looks like this than a curve that looks like Darksabers. Let's put it that way. Just because you're getting your weapon earlier. Badges on there? Yes. Do you want to guess what the best badges are before I scroll to them? It's not close, by the way. Stone is... Stone is the best one. I will give you that as a spoiler. Your badge is okay. Not exciting. Skull badge... Eh. At the top end, it gets kind of cool, but you gotta live to get there. Wolf badge, same idea. Top end gets kind of cool, but you gotta live. Flame badge, yeah. Just as you live, it gets better. Rainbow badge, oh. Stone badge, oh. Not, not very reasonable. Kind of the best items in the game by about a mile. This is all classes, yeah. You can narrow it down to specific classes if you want to. So, like, if you want to see how Pyro does when it gets the Reaper badge, you can do that. A little bit better than average. In the flame badge would be much better. It's just no tempo. The thing that makes these badges good is that they're very good tempo. It's not even really being able to see other class items. It's just one of every buff after five seconds is close to unbeatable in the early game. And then five block every three seconds is two garlics for five gold and one slot on your econ item. Like, this is basically a pig, two pigs, and two garlics stapled together for five gold. I'm gonna be nerfed soon. I don't know what the plan is. I'm sure they will be, assuming this is accurate. <laughs> You can do... So you can look at, like, Ice Dragon's curve versus the uh, Cryomancer curve and see how much better your build is when you find Ice Dragon versus when you don't. I don't know what Cryomancer's called, so I can't control F it. Frozen Flame. Like, on average, Frozen Flame is trash. But if you find one of the items early... I guess even Frostbite doesn't really help until you start finding multiple items. But if you get an early Frost Dragon, good lord. Completely flips it. You've never done that well with Cryo stuff. That's because you have not gotten a turn 8 Ice Dragon. That present. Let me go back to all classes. Yeah. Solid. You get Ice Dragon on Reaper. Yeah. Imagine it's a lot worse. Eh. 
Respectable if you get it early, but it falls off. How about Chonk? Also kind of falls off. It's like better on rounds 12 to 15 than 16 to 18. I guess part of that is just other comps coming online. But like Ranger Exodias start just killing you in five seconds. What about Chonk on Pyro? Surely that's better. <laughs> yeah, it like never happens. There's. I have 80 games where the Pyro got to build up the Chonk. Chonk on Pyro is stupid. Chonk on Pyro is very stupid. Oh, you can see piggy bank win rates. This is this one's cool. So Pyro doesn't get punished all that hard by piggy banks. And then obviously you start pulling ahead as you're generating gold. Piggy banks on round 18 have a positive win rate. But if you look at it on Berserker. A little bit more punished. Just a little bit. And then once it starts profiting, you're looking a little better. Compared to just like buying tempo items. How about Reaper? That was the Reaper piggy bank. Well, my love for healing herbs on Reaper is certainly vindicated. Good lord. Yeah. It's so like turn one's bad, but then immediately pulling ahead very significantly. Carries it into the late game, too. We can check flute. Oh, yeah. Beautiful item. Beautiful item. One of the best. Flute literally better than Acorn Collar. Why does Piggy Bank Reaper line up so well with Herb Reaper? Does it? I don't know what you mean. Oh, just in terms of like... I mean, Herbs tends to go deeper, right? There's more here. They're also not necessarily to scale. But yeah, you buy herbs early, you buy piggy bank early. They cancel each other out a bit. Keeps you in the green portion. Basically, what this is telling us is that piggy bank and healing herbs is a combo. Surprise, surprise. Buy every herb you see. Certainly on Reaper. I don't know how it is overall. Yeah, it's all pretty good overall. Is it being pulled up by the Reapers? What about healing herbs on Ranger? Still okay here, too. Yeah, just good across the board. I wasn't expecting to be the worst on Pyro. What about having a bigger health pool makes fights longer, which makes regen more valuable? But I guess just more important to balance out your damage on Pyro than it is to get healing when you already have a big health pool. Huh. But yeah. You know me. If you were around for the Gwent or the Storybook Brawl days, I do love a good stat dump. Flames don't work well with herbs. Uh, flames themselves don't, but the extra health that you get from flames does. 
that 90% of those herbs are on sale? Uh, probably not. Not 90%. Yeah, let's... Like, I buy a lot of full-price herbs. If we compare it to other common items... So there's 15,000 here. 15,000 15, here, yeah. So twice as many garlics are being bought than healing herbs, which makes sense. There's more herbs being bought than piggy banks. Or, no, that's... 20,000. There's more banks being bought than herbs. There are twice as many whetstones as herbs. Where are the rest of the commons? About as many herbs as bucklers. Did I ever... Yeah, plenty of time. Especially on Reaper. It's not really fair to compare it to weapons, because you only buy one weapon, typically. How is the stone number this low? What? It's better two by two or fanny pack. You can't really... Like, every board has a 2x2 two two on it. Not every board has a fanny pack on it. You can't narrow this down to, like, boards that have X but don't have Y, or boards that have X and Y. Like, here, Leatherback's positive, but that's because we have just Diamond and Up selected. I actually wonder... We have everything selected. Will Leather Bag on round one be even, or is this biased one way or the other? Hmm. So whatever this data source is, it seems like it's biased towards winning builds for some reason. Like, if we look at the starting bags even, if we go... So Ranger Bag's positive, Storage Coffin's positive, uh, Duffel Bag, Duffel Bag is positive, Fire Pit? Yeah. Yeah, the only way for all of them to be positive would be as if there is something biasing towards winning boards. Otherwise somebody's got to be losing another one. But yeah, love me a good data dump. Anyway.